the Wisconsin Badgers get revenge. That's right. Revenge against the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Walked away with a big win. A big win. One not even as close as the final box score suggests. The Badgers get a 12-point win. Is the Badgers defense back? How did Tyler Wall's senior night go? Kamari freaking McGee. And Greg Gard continues to shorten the bench. An interesting coaching decision. We're going to break it all down here on the Scotty Six Pack Podcast. Good morning, and thank you for enjoying it with the Six Pack, the Scotty Six Pack, the only podcast talking all things Wisconsin sports with you six days a week. I'm your host, Kedrick Stumbrus, and you can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stumbrus, and follow the podcast at Scotty Six Pack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. Badgers get a big win, a big win. Uh, and, and for those of you watching on YouTube, um, different set, of course, in, in a different place once again. As as the show often is being recorded in new locations, you can see me trying to finagle with the setup here. Lighting is bad. I don't know what to do about it right now. Um, trying our best. Trying our best. But maybe, maybe you're fine with that. Maybe you listen on the audio platform because you'd prefer not to look at my ugly mug. That is fine. That is totally, totally fine. Because the Badgers get the win. So you can say as many nasty things about me as you would like. And the Badgers get a, a big win. If, if you listen to the show and listened to the recent Bracketology episode that we recorded with T3 Bracketology, this was Wisconsin's last real spot to take a bad loss. Wisconsin doesn't have a bad loss on the season. Now, of course, not all losses like all losses are bad, but not a loss to a really low quality team. Michigan, you could probably call it that, but it's on the road. A quad two loss in terms of net rankings. Rutgers, this was the last chance for Wisconsin to take a really bad loss. It didn't happen, which which is very good. And for a while there, it looked like that might be the case in this one, that Wisconsin would take its first really awful loss and send this, this team spinning. Frankly, it looked that way for quite a long time, going all the way into the second half and, and kind of deep in, into the second half. But eventually, Wisconsin's defense locked itself down, was able to come away. A, a team that only led by two points at halftime, thanks to a nice little set play for AJ Store to get a layup right at the buzzer. But Wisconsin walks away after some maybe suspect three-point defense in the beginning, some was just Rutgers hitting some tough shots, but again, it's always hard to suss out where there is issues with Wisconsin's defense versus teams shooting well against it. And it looks like really it's just more defensive problems. Players having tr trouble navigating ball screens, teams getting up deep threes, clean looks, and, and Rutgers made the most of this game for, for quite a while. Rutgers had a lead of 4740 late late in eh, not late but early into the second half 1435 to go and Wisconsin kind kind of kind of gave it to them uh, uh, and that gives the question of is the Badgers defense back is, is it back because in the first half of of this game Rutgers started out 4 of 7 from deep four of its first seven three point attempts Rutgers finished the game uh, making just three of its next 14 attempts from deep. So not great. Wisconsin really clamped down in this one overall, held Cliff Amore to seven points on three of six shooting. You always like to see that. O only five rebounds, um, four of them defensive, only one offensive rebound given up. Did allow five offensive rebounds to Jamichael Davies, which was... A little bit interesting, not exactly sure where that comes from. Uh, and four of them coming in the second half, interestingly enough. Uh, I guess I'd have to look back and see how many of those were done late because Rutgers did grab a couple of late defensive rebounds in this one. But Wisconsin's defense really locked down for, for a big stretch of that game overall. And the game was kind of won on a, a big stretch in which the Badgers were able to shut down Rutgers. When Rutgers led 47-42, you you got Kamari McGee checking in with 1356 left. This this little tidbit here, uh, courtesy of Zach Heilprin of the Zone Madison. Um, when Kamari McGee checked in, 
Badgers down 47-42. Just before that, Badgers were down 47-40 at 13-56 remaining. Then Kamari McGee had nine points in that stretch there where the Badgers got way up in that one, outscored Rutgers 17-2. to Kamari McGee went four for four in just a little over six minutes. A, a impressive stretch for, for the Badgers over the course there and just shutting down Rutgers and anything the, the Scarlet Knights wanted to do offensively, forcing a, a significant n- number of turnovers, 10 turnovers in the first half, eight s- turnovers in the second half. So the defense showing up in both halves in, in terms of causing havoc uh, over overall Rutgers, I mean, shooting just about the same in, in both halves of the game as well from the floor, but shooting far worse from three in the second half. Uh, And uh, even with Wisconsin allowing Rutgers to go to the free throw line 12 times in the second half compared to the first half's three. And I'm I'm sorry for my cell phone going off in the background. Uh, The Badgers still clamped down enough to hold Rutgers to a respectable 66 points. Certainly not a beat down performance like Wisconsin has had in years prior, uh, but oh my goodness! And as my as my camera completely f- fuzzes out on me, not not showing me whatsoever. Uh, uh, this this might be this might be tough sledding the rest of the way, folks. Uh, <laughs> but Wisconsin's defense locked lock down. I I, th- I thought that th- there was some defensive mishandlings by Kamari McGee in particular, and I'll, I'll talk about that li- a little bit later on in the show, but. Wisconsin didn't allow Rutgers to get super clean looks. Didn't allow clean looks to to Cliff Amore. I, I thought Stephen Krell showed up on the on the defensive end quite well. It, it was it was really solid for, for the Badgers in, in a way that I I did not expect them to to be able to uh, be able to handle quite quite frank quite frank for forty full minutes. I do think though th- this is a Rutgers offense that is obviously not the best in the in the country by by any means. It has been booned advantaged by the the return of jeremiah williams to the lineup but certainly not a juggernaut by any means regardless wisconsin succeeded by taking out Rutgers' best players best offensive threats we talked about cliff mori not not going off uh for wisconsin like many times cliff mori does jeremiah williams held like jeremiah williams did get 16 points but five turnovers there, there's some question of of signal and noise there, right? There's some question of causality. Um, I frankly think some of this is Rutgers taking itself out of the game by by not being able to feed passes very well to to Cliff and Murray down low. Rutgers guards kind of letting things suffer for for them down down the stretch. Uh, Simpson had four turnovers. Jeremiah Williams had five turnovers. Um, yeah, th- th- I think everybody who got significant minutes for Rutgers had a-, a turnover in this game, at least one. Three players for-, for Rutgers with four or five turnovers. Really bad. I, I mean, w- Wisconsin had 12 turnovers of, of its own, uh, but 18 turnovers but by Rutgers is not a, a 13 turnovers for Wisconsin. Sorry, uh, but eight, 18 turnovers is not a winning recipe to to beat the Badgers. So uh, I and some of these were just straight up steals too, right? The Badgers making an effort, regardless of if it is Rutgers being lazy with the ball, or Wisconsin taking an extra jump, uh, Chucky Hepburn ch- jumping a couple of passes, John Blackwell jump, jumping some passes. Chucky Hepburn early, eight minutes in, already had three steals. Uh, just a really, really, really impressive performance for for the Badgers overall defensively that, that I thought went quite a long way in, in winning this one. If, if Wisconsin is going to defend with this kind of intensity, you're not necessarily going to put up the, the same defensive numbers overall, but you're going to be able to hold teams enough with the the added benefit of having a offense that is above average for a Wisconsin basketball team. It's going to win you a lot of games. Going to keep you in a lot of games. T- Tyler Wall with four steals, Chucky Hepburn with five steals. Impressive. We'll see. We'll see what happens next. Uh, talking about Chucky Hepburn, 
Tyler Wall, four or five steals piece. The, the MVP and NIP of the Badgers win over the Scarlet Knights. MVP. Oh, this is tough. This is tough. I think I got to give it to John Blackwell. And, and I think the, the choice really here is between, mm, I, I guess you could make a case for Chucky, for Chucky Hepburn. Uh, I, I wish we would have gotten maybe a little bit more from him on, on the offensive end of the four, but like he had six points, but he also had six assists, right? Uh, that, that's huge. He, he was absolutely dishing in this one, ha, had a great game. Um, but I think you got to choose between him, John Blackwell and, and Kamari McGee. And I'll talk about Kamari McGee a little bit later. John Blackwell, I think, is the actual MVP of this game, though. Uh, although he only had three of six shooting, only took six six shots from the floor, still managed 17 points. 17 points on six shots from the floor because he got to the line over and over and over again. John Blackwell attacking the basket. He looks like the quintessential Wisconsin basketball player that this team needs. This team is so much better with John Blackwell on the floor, which makes me think there are genuine, like, genuine questions about what this team's best lineup is. Is that with Max Klesman on the floor or not? I, th I think there's a reasonable debate to be had there at this point. Granted, I think Max Klesman is, is a solid defender, but it's had some trouble navigating ball screens as of late, whether he should go over or under ball screens in particular. John Blackwell seem, seems to be showing up aggressively on both the offensive and the defensive end. Uh, early or er, in, in the second half, John Blackwell had one of the best, I, I mean, a couple of the best plays in, in this game overall. John Blackwell had ridiculous defensive pressure uh, against against Jeremiah Williams to, to force a shot clock violation, headed into the under-12 timeout, just attacking at... at, at at the perimeter, attacking at the point, making sure that Rutgers was not going to get any penetration, not going to be able to pass the ball off. It was John Blackwell, just a complete effort one-on-one -on -one defensively to force a shot clock violation turnover. One of the best defensive effort plays that I've seen from this team all season long. Um, th there was another point in time where John Blackwell was forced into a miss uh, you know, layup thanks to Cliff Amori, and, and we'll talk about <laughs> some of those layups and, and Cliff Amori of it all uh, in just a second too. But then John Blackwell moved and turned the ball over on the other end of the floor. 17 points, three of six shooting from the field, two of three on three-pointers, nine to 10 from the free throw line. Only one offensive rebound, but seven defensive rebounds, 17 points, eight rebounds, two steals, 26 minutes plus 26 on the night. Have a freaking night, John Blackwell. I think the only reason I can't quite give it to Stephen Crowell is because of some of the issues that the Badgers had finishing around the rim. Um, Stephen Crowell had a, had a great game. Uh, 17 points and 6 of 15 shooting. He had 6 offensive rebounds, and I think 5 of them came on one single possession as the Badgers just pounded the glass down, down the stretch. And this was where I think Rutgers really lost spirit. That possession. And we talked in the preview episode of this game about what is Rutgers' motivation factor going, going to be here. They've had a bad season, a losing season in the Big Ten for the first time in five years. You're not making the NCAA tournament. You're probably not making the NIT. What do you have to play for? You, you've been shuttling, crisscrossing the country, very far out west. Like, yes, you have to fly west at any time that you are Rutgers. You have, you have to take a somewhat lengthy flight, but not all the way to Madison, not all the way to Lincoln. That's what they've had to do this week, fly back and forth twice. What's the motivation factor when you give up, whether it was five or six offensive rebounds on one possession to Stephen Crowell with either four or five of them and Tyler Wall with another? That just breaks your spirit, particularly given the fact that Cliff Amore had been defending so well earlier on in the game. Wisconsin was one of 13 on layups to start the game. Wisconsin was just awful on layups to begin the game overall. Ended up finishing eight, eight of 26. So the Badgers, uh, seven of 12. No, sorry, seven, seven of 13. I, I cannot do math um, the, the rest of the way. And that's fine. Ooh, one of 13, that, that is Cliff Amore just doing the most work. And then when you get 
pounded at the rim. Maybe I should have said that. Um, <laughs> um, the one place that you have been showing up all night, that's demoralizing for a team that already had questions about whether or not it was going to be motivated enough to play in this game. Mawat Meg did not play in this game, even though he traveled with the team. They are very, very, very difficult for Rutgers. And five or six offense offense rebounds there all, all misses until the last one when it ends up sending Stephen Crowell to the line to shoot shoot free throws. Anyway, Stephen Crowell, 17 points, 11 rebounds, an assist. Phenomenal. He, he's plus 25 on the night. I, I mean, very, very, very solid stuff from Stephen Crowell getting getting one over on on Cliff Amore in terms of in terms of scoring, in terms of offense, offensive rebounds. Solid, but I think you want a little bit more from this team being able to finish at the rim. Obviously, not all of those layup misses are on Stephen Crowell, uh, but I, I think the, the efforts by John Blackwell overall are just phenomenal. Plus, you take into effect his age just makes his performance maybe just a little touch more impressive. In terms of the NIP, needs improvement player. I hate to do it uh, on your birthday, man. I hate to do it on your senior night. I hate to do it considering I have written the article for Badger Notes, which, by the way, Christian Borman doing doing great work uh, recapping this game. Go go read his post game piece over on over on Badger Notes. You can click the link in my podcast description to to get to my work, and then you'll be able to go find Christians on Badger Notes from there. He's at the game doing post game interview stuff. I hate to do it on your senior night. I hate to do it considering all the work I've done talking about you climbing up the Wisconsin record books this season. But Tyler Wall. You are the NIP of this game. Oh, one of six, one of six from the field, three points, six rebounds, three offensive rebounds. Still, Wisconsin kind of killing them on the glass a little bit. Uh, four steals. Awesome. Uh, like we, like we mentioned before, but at halftime, uh, Tyler Wall not having his best game overall. Uh, and then Tyler Wall misses a, a layup early in the second half. T Tyler Wall also turned the ball over quite a few times. He had four turnovers to go along with his four steals. So, yeah, maybe it all kind of comes out in the wash, but not exactly something that you want from him. He he really struggled early, was kind of getting burned on defense a couple of times, too. I don't think this was Tyler Wall's best game. But if Wisconsin can win without a Tyler Wall's best game, I, I think that's really solid. There's obviously another player that we need to put into consideration for MVP here that we haven't quite touched on at length. We're going to talk about him because was he the missing piece? Was he the missing piece for, for this Wisconsin Badgers team? He he might be. He might be. We're going to answer that question after we talk to you about our friends over at TickPick because TickPick is where I get tickets to every sporting event, concert, comedy show that I want to go to. You, you could get to this game tonight on TickPick th thanks to some excellent, excellent deals and excellent deals coming along with no fee tickets. You're going to pay zero dollars on tickets, ticket fees, no service fees, no delivery fees. Anytime you pay on TickPick, plus you're going to get the best deals. And if you use my link in the podcast description, you're going to save 10 bucks on your first order on TickPick, the only ticket selling app to charge you zero fees. If you want to go and use TickPick and, and get yourself to Zach Eady's senior day, Look, whether or not you like Zach Eady, whether or not you like the Purdue Boilermakers, Wisconsin's going to play there on Purdue Senior Day this upcoming Sunday. It'll be a sight to behold. That, that is a hot ticket on TickPick, but it's the best deal you can get for TickPick. So make the drive down to West Lafayette. Save 10 bucks on your first order by clicking my link in the podcast description using the link that's on the screen now. And never pay fees on tickets ever again by downloading the TickPick app. That's T-I-C-K, P-I-C-K in the Google Play Store, the Apple App Store. Save 10 bucks in your first order on no-fee tickets. Uh, coming up this week on the show yet? Tomorrow, we're going to preview that game between Wisconsin and Purdue, uh, and then we will have a recap piece episode in your feed on Monday morning. Uh, if you have not listened yet to mine and Noah's Wisconsin Women's Hockey conference tournament semifinal and final preview the badgers are playing their two biggest rivals this weekend it looks like then they're gonna head right into the ncaa tournament we break down all the latest news including some real controversy over who is going to be wisconsin's starting goaltender 
the rest of the way in the postseason. We break that all down on yesterday's episode. If you want a written format preview piece, that's going to be up on the site for Badger Notes uh, sometime today as the, as this comes out. Those games start today. Wisconsin playing uh, at 4.30 p.m. Should be awesome. Should be awesome. Just as awesome in this game. Kamari freaking McGee. Kamari freaking McGee finally comes back. I told you, I guessed that he wouldn't be. He made me eat my words. And early in the game, he was getting cooked on defense a little bit. Kamari McGee ends up with, what, four fouls in this game? Uh, He was getting cooked on defense a little bit. I think he had, no, he only had two in the first half, but got cooked on defense just a little bit. Was kind of a step too slow at times. And I don't mind the fouls so much because he, he's going to play some limited minutes. He should use those fouls because Wisconsin doesn't necessarily need him if it comes down to it, right? You, you have your starters. Those starters need to be very careful with those fouls. Kamari McGee can be a little bit more aggressive and use those fouls if he gets burned. But Kamari McGee did get burned a couple of times. And, and I said early in the game, I don't know if Kamari McGee has it on, on the defensive end tonight. But instead, he goes off in his 10 minutes of action. Kamari McGee posts 11 points on five of five shooting. He hits a three, a beautiful three to kind of put the dagger in, in the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. It, it was a good one. Um, look, he provides a real spark off the bench and Max Klesman, who got injured in this game, by the way, don't have any idea what his status is as of yet. Uh, I guess I should be monitoring that right now. Um, he was warming up on the bike, looked like he maybe tried to give it a go, but wasn't quite able to. Uh, so it's unsure what Max Klesmit's status is going to be, but given that he was not able to come up late in the game, he got replaced by a very, very, very serviceable Kamari McGee in, in the best way. For the Badgers, I mean, doing doing enough on the defensive end, scoring, it, making like just a couple of real timely cuts. There, there was a timely cut that he made down down the lane, right in the paint, in which uh, Chucky Hepburn was able to dish to him, uh, dish to Kamari McGee, and he was able to make a layup on on a night where almost nobody was making layups. Right, it, it was a good night for. Uh, Kamari McGee, overall, I, I loved to see it. Connor Asijan tonight saying, inside sources tell me this is true. Kamari McGee is back. Huge night. I am looking still to see about any updates, anybody who asked about... Max Klesmith's status. I'm not seeing anything. I could be missing it. I, I don't know. I don't know what his status is going to be, but obviously if Kamari McGee is going to be able to play, uh, that, that's going to be a big advantage for Wisconsin versus not having him. Um, one player who didn't really show up at all in this game as Greg Gard continues to shorten the bench, Connor Seijin. Connor Seijin didn't check in until like garbage time. And in his time there, Rutgers is, is full court pressing. And that lineup ends up turning the ball over with Connor Seijin on the floor to close the game. Connor Seijin, no, no real minutes. Uh, when you're looking at the half comparisons overall, da, da, da. Connor Seijin, his only, his only minute in the second half. Uh, Isaac Lindsay, who hasn't played many games lately, but you know, he shows he only gets in, in garbage time. Carter Gilmore only gets in at the very, very, very end of the game as, as Tyler wall subs out, get, gets his standing ovation on senior night. Nolan winter, three minutes in the first half, three minutes in the second half. No, Nolan winter, not, not getting a ton of minutes here as, as Steven Crowell is taking a large load in, in the front court for the Badgers, 17 minutes in both halves. And then Marcus over gets one minute of action in the first half. He chucks up a three. Again, my, my criticism of him is that the Badgers aren't doing anything with him to, to challenge him as, as a four, challenge him on the inside, just operating as a, a stretch 
stretch four, he only shoots threes when he's in the game. And I, and I think that makes him you know, not, not, not as valuable. And frankly is why having Kamari McGee back in the game, I think is even more of a boon to Wisconsin because given the front court depth, Wisconsin is much better off, I think, trying to go small than play with its limited front court depth because Nolan Winter is only going to be able to give you so much. And I don't think Wisconsin has a genuine backup to Tyler Wall at all, whether it's Carter Gilmore or Marcus Silver. I don't think either of them are, are an answer there. So if Wisconsin has Kamari McGee, has John Blackwell, has Max Klesman, you have a lot of options to be able to go small ball. And if you really need to, there's a counter siege in there waiting for you uh, if he's going to play well enough defensively o overall granted i i don't know what, that, what i don't know what the status there is and frankly if i'm guessing just guessing given his continued diminished role i don't think counter siege is gonna be a badger next year just a guess um and i think it's probably good for both sides because john blackwell i think is largely supplied to the role that he would have he he and aj store and aj store who we haven't even touched on who is actually wisconsin's leading scorer in this game right and uh may maybe should be uh, a real candidate for for MVP in this one. He, he had 19 points on eight of 15 shooting. Uh, attacked the rim, like really, really attacked the rim. Uh, he made three of six three pointers and had uh, he made his first two in the first half. We talked about in the preview episode. He missed all four of his three point attempts in the first half of the Badgers game in Piscataway. So seeing him get going from deep early was really good, but it also didn't stop him from going to the rim and went to the rim quite often, despite the fact that he was getting denied by a Cliff Omori did not seem to be dissuaded by the fact that the Badgers were having trouble at the rim overall. And I think that's huge. I think Wisconsin, if they're going to win, if they're going to have that aggressiveness, that's how it's going to be done. That's how you're going to get the wins. And going away from it because you are struggling early is not the way that Wisconsin is going to be able to ha handle these games. It's not the way Wisconsin is going to be able to handle Zach Eady. Go at Zach Eady. He, he is obviously tough to get around, but if this Wisconsin team just showed that it can win a game, which it really struggled from the restricted area, struggled from the paint for a while, struggled at the rim, struggled to making layups, you're going to be able to win this game by 12, kind of going away with a Cliff Amore, who is probably the second best rim protecting center in the league right behind Zach Eady. If you can show that you can win this game, Greg Gard has to say you can go and do a similar thing. Now, again, I'm not saying Rutgers is anything near the quality that a Purdue is, right? I think we need to find the happy medium in this game between saying, hey, you got a quad three win. Let's not overreact here. And the space between there and oh my God, Wisconsin's going to go win on Zach Eady's senior night in West Lafayette. There's a lot of space there. And, and the truth is somewhere in between about what this team is and what this team is going to be doing the rest of the season. Uh, but I thought this was a really... Um, I, I thought this was a game that inspired a lot of optimism, given the way that most players performed, including an AJ Store and his willingness to attack the room because he's so, so, so much better when he does it including with some real highlight, real dunks, man. <laughs> it's so much fun to watch. I love it. Um, yeah, big game for the Badgers. Got a big win. Greg Gard continues to shorten the bench. Hopefully, hopefully Max Klesman's going to be able to be back because otherwise I think this is a seven, I think this is a seven man rotation. You're, you're going to get some Nolan Winter to bring it up to eight, but I would not be surprised if aside from maybe you get a maximum of 10 Nolan winter minutes the rest of the way, but really I think it's going to be limited to more like eight. Otherwise I think you're seeing the starting five plus John Blackwell plus Kamari McGee. I think that's it. This bench is going to be shortened if only because nobody else has shown enough at, at this point. And the the pieces that you have are kind of continuing to show more, right? John Blackwell in particular is showing more. Kamari McGee just showed a lot in this game, and he had one data point since he got back from his injury, but it's a big one. So hopefully Wisconsin can do it. We're, we're going to be back breaking down Wisconsin-Purdue tomorrow, talk, talking about what I, what I think might happen in that game, how, how Wisconsin can have some key takeaways from this one, how Purdue's playing as of late, what, what are the Badgers going to be able to do in that one? It's going to be a huge game. Going to be a huge game as Wisconsin tries to clinch that last double by. Frankly, they could catch the third spot uh, still. So that second to last double by in 
the Big Ten tournament, the NCAA tournament awaits. And if Wisconsin can get that win over Purdue, that might even be good enough for a seed, seed line bump, man. That, that could give them some real confidence about getting to that five line instead of the six, uh, which would be awesome for the Badgers. But that's going to do it for today's Sonny, Scotty Six Pack Podcast. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. And, and join us tomorrow as we talk Wisconsin basketball. And we'll maybe even have some some thoughts about uh, Wisconsin Wisconsin hockey. The selection show is on Sunday. I imagine I might be able to get get an emergency episode out as as the bracket release is doing doing a little bit of a bracket preview before our full NCAA tournament preview with Noah Clark next week. So stay tuned to the feed. We got a lot going. On. It is March. It is madness. It's the best freaking time of the year. Let's go on Wisconsin. We'll talk to you tomorrow.